Hello everyone and welcome to the channel. My name is Brent and in today's video we're going to go ahead and cover a question that was asked today here on the channel in the comments section. We had Al's House asking to do a comparison between VC and MPW. These are two real estate investment trusts. VC being VC Properties Inc and MPW being Medical Properties Trust. We're going to go ahead and cover these two companies really quickly here in today's video. So if you are brand new to the channel, have not yet subscribed, go down below, hit the red button to subscribe, make it gray, hit the bell to be notified every time we release a brand new video. And of course, give this video a thumbs up, make it blue. We cover making money, saving money, and investing money here on the channel. And we're going to go ahead and kick it off by taking a look at Medical Properties Trust. Now here, we're gonna go ahead and use Merrill Edge to do some research because I'm not too familiar with these companies. So what I can actually use is the Merrill Edge platform. And by typing up here, the company ticker symbol itself, I can go in and take a look at this company's stock story. So here we have the beginning of the story, which is who is this company? How are they doing? How has the stock performed? And what do the analysts say? And then we'll go ahead and take a look at some of their other financial metrics and some other data, such as their dividend information as well. So with that said, let's go ahead and get into the, the company here. So overall, MPW is a real estate investment trust within the medical field. So they own and operate net lease healthcare facilities hospitals across the U.S., but also over in foreign countries. They also provide loans and mortgages to healthcare operators. So here, over the past one year, they are up 9.65%. So their 52-week range is from $16.10 to $22.82. So between last year and this year, you know, June of 2020 and currently, they have only been trading from 16 to 22 dollars so you know this doesn't include that march 2020 dip so i would have liked to have seen you know where they drop to but we'll cover that here in just a minute now one of the things here that i noticed earlier was that they have 106 employees and i thought that this company would be fairly small because of this but when we come down here and take a look at their market caps mpw has a market cap of 12 billion versus OHI, which is another popular healthcare REIT. This is the Omega Healthcare Investors Mark, you know, group at 8.6 billion, Sabra at 3.9 billion, and then DOC is one I've recently been taking a look at, and this one's at 4.1 billion, ticker symbol DOC. So kind of interesting to see that this is one of the larger medical real estate investment trusts. And then here within the area, it also discusses their top executives, we can see here back in 2018, they had steadily growing revenue from 2018 to 2019. They went up a little under 30,000. And then again, from 2019 to 2020, they went up another 40 million. No, that's 40 million, sorry. 40 million, you know, 30 million, 40 million. But their net income, on the other hand, has been dropping since 2018. It was at 1 billion. Then it dropped down by, what, one third to 391 million and it's recently gone up slightly to 462 million so revenue and net income revenue has been growing net income has been decreasing net income in a real estate investment trust they may have made they may have made some really big acquisitions which they're able to write off so much of their property that they just acquired you know not only do they write off the depreciation they're writing off all these deductibles as far as the repairs you know all the expenses of the business so they could be deducting so much that it just shows on their balance sheet as having a negative net income so here medical properties earnings on a quarterly basis so over the past four quarters they've missed 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 and came in over so you know as far as analysts go they over usually they over estimate uh, and this is consensus and actual so yeah they always come in a little bit under where they think and then here recently in 2021 they came right on the dot so i would have to see how they perform during their earnings you know does the stock price move to the downside during earnings because they often miss that could be something that could you know just kind of think about if you do hold this company 
And let's go say, take a look at how the stock has performed in comparison to say the S&P 500. So S&P 500, this is over the past one year. Over the past one year, it is up 38.43%, whereas this company here, MPW is up 7.55%, whereas the S&P is up 38.43%. We can also throw in real estate in here and real equity real estate investment trust. And this will kind of give you other comparisons. So here MPW is down here at 7.5. First is if you had invested in some sort of a equity real estate investment trust, such as, you know, there's a few different, I think V, I can't think of the acronym, you know, Vanguard's Real Estate Investment Trust. That is one that's pretty popular. Uh, I'm sure that they probably would have had better performance versus this one. So this one has been decreasing as far as their share price. And over the past one year, up 7.55%. So let's go ahead and quickly compare this to their industry peers. And we could do a quick comparison here to see how these have been performing. So MPW up 7.55, DOC at 6.39. And then we have these few others here. We have OHI and Sabra up in the 22, 26% range. So just a little comparison there between their industry peers and the S&P 500. And then we also have a, a little PE ratio. You know, how is MPW as far as its industrial peers and we can see that the industry average for real estate investment trusts are at 49.8. MPW is currently sitting at a 22.6, which actually puts it below its industry peers. So here we see the performance of Sabra and OHI is, you know, four times, you know, three to four times over where MPW is at. But we can see that they're also trading at higher valuations for their price to earnings ratios there. The beta here, it's a little bit more volatile when compared to the S&P 500. So the S&P 500 always has a market volatility of one. So it does have slightly higher volatility there at a 1.06. Then if we slide down here, MPW pays an estimated annual dividend of roughly 5.48%. So that's pretty high for its current yield. This is above the 2.87 average yield for companies in this industry. So other healthcare REITs roughly pay an average of 2.87 with this one paying a 5.48 and that could be because the price has gone down recently so we can see that the average right there is 2.87 whereas this one is basically almost double where the industry peers are at and as far as ratings from other analysts they are not you know it's not being covered it's one of those small companies again this was a fairly small market cap of what 12 billion so not too large there uh, short term outlooks are all pretty bearish. So bearish on the short term, bearish on the midterm, long term, you know, longer than nine months, it is looking positive, but it's not giving any sort of data as to why. And then here we have the overall score versus healthcare REITs and the industries. So MPW is within the laggards. So it is not keeping up with, say, other leaders of the real estate investment trust area or you know in comparison to say the s p 500 so there is the information there for mpw let's go ahead and quickly cover bc properties so here very nice positive change there for the one year up 55.2 percent so as of 2020 you know back in june this one was at 1932 it is currently sitting at 31 dollars and four cents so it has a high of 33.35 so a little off its high right there this company has another 147 employees it is headquartered over in new york we can see how this one does to its competitors oh one thing i didn't cover was who are they so who is this company bc properties is a triple net lease real estate investment trust formed back in 2017 spun out of caesar entertainment post bankruptcy bc has 23 mixed use gaming lodging and entertainment properties in its portfolio and its subsidiary that owns four championship golf courses so this is kind of interesting bc also owns 34 acres of undeveloped land in las vegas so this is really interesting i see much more upside potential with bc here coming out of you know 2020 with all that you know they have, they have a really nice mixture here of entertainment. You know, everybody's out there right now trying to find some entertainment after being inside their homes for the past year. 
So they have really nice looking portfolio. I would have to look into, you know, where are these 23 properties? And then they also have 34 acres of undeveloped land in Las Vegas. So it was probably purchased very cheaply. They're gonna go ahead and build on it or lease it out. So that seems pretty positive, you know, pretty positive for the company overall. Uh, when compared to other real estate investment trusts within their industry, VC is at 16.8 billion versus we have Post Hotels Resort, the MGM Growth Properties, and Gaming and Leisure Properties. So I, I remember seeing this one, GLPI, another YouTuber long ago. Uh, but all of them, you can see, are still within that 10 to $20 billion market cap right there. We're we'll go ahead and scroll down here to how are they doing. This one isn't covered by... You know, as far as the data goes, that's completely fine here. Now, here's something, remember on the other one here, we saw it with how are they doing? We saw that this one had net losses of 105 million. This one, on the other hand, has operating expense of 29 million and operating income of 345 million. So interesting that this one doesn't include, oh, there's the revenue, okay. Okay, that's really interesting that it has it flip-flopped. So operating expense, 204 million, revenue, 98 million, net losses, 105 million. I see, okay. So this one brought in total revenue of 374 million, had $29 million of expenses and came up with 345 million of operating income whereas this one had much more expenses very little revenue and ended up being net loss so kind of interesting there so this one's still sticking out as being much more positive versus the other here if we take a look at the revenue and net income year over year it went from 898 to 894 so basically same for same there for 2018 2019 even during the whole lockdown back in 2020 this one brought in 1.2 billion dollars of revenue here in 2018 548 million in net income 586 in net income and 685 million in, in net income so nice steady growth for the company here earnings per share knocking it out of the park so every time they come in quarter after quarter their estimates are actually right on point or beating expectations. So this is really nice to see, you know, maybe they aren't as volatile during earnings season. So how has their stock performed? You know, let's go ahead and compare this to the S&P 500. So boom, when you compare it to the S&P 500, it is up 53.74% versus the S&P 500 at 38.43%. If you go ahead and compare it to the real estate investment area, it has also basically doubled their performance here for 20, you know, for, for the past year. So as of back in late June, 2020, up until now, it's basically had double the performance and we compare it to the industry peers. We can see that VC has came in just in line with the other hot one there, which is ticker symbol HST. And this was the uh, hotel one. Can't think of the full name there, but I remember it being hotel. So overall, this industry within, you know, gaming and leisure, casinos, resorts and stuff, that seems to be doing really well when compared to the medical side of the REIT sector. So kind of interesting there. And here we go. We scroll down, we can take a look at the PE ratios when compared. So when you compare this to its actual industry peers, Whereas we've seen a ton of growth for this one, you know, it's up 53% over the past one year. When you compare it to its other industries, uh, industry peers, it has a PE ratio of 12.6, trailing 12 months. So that's really, really nice right now. When the S&P 500 has a higher PE of 25, you know, it's already kind of topping out for the moment. And then this one over here is at a 12.6. The industry PE is at a 49.8. This is showing, you know, actually really nice valuations for its price to earnings it is slightly more volatile versus the s p 500 but it has been in the REIT sector so between 2019 up until now it's been pretty volatile out there for real estate investment trusts its current dividend yield sits pretty nicely at 4.21 so very close to realty income another real estate investment trust i think that one's also a triple triple lease company 
Uh, this one is 2.87% above the average yield for the companies. So the average is right there is 2.87. This one's at a 4.21. And you can see that it's been pretty consistent. So they've probably been raising their dividend fairly nicely. You know, their, their dividend yearly raise has been nice. So it's been kind of keeping in line. So they've had stock appreciation, but they've also raised their dividend pretty nicely. So it's kind of kept their dividend yield that over that 4% range throughout the last few years. As far as analysts say, it is not currently covered by Morningstar or CRFA. And that is basically it. I think that's about it here. So short-term outlook does look bearish. Mid-term outlook does look bearish. Long-term outlook looks bullish. And this is just because it has pulled back off their highs generally. You know, they're not giving you any sort of data here. So based off, you know, whatever charts that they're using to gather this data, they don't they usually show some deeper signs down here you know why does it show bearish but in most cases because this one isn't you know very popular or followed it's more than likely because it has pulled back off their highs it's just showing signs of short-term bearish movement versus upside potential so i don't think it's anything negative there we can see that the overall score here with other reits is above average so average would be right there in the center and this one's sort of in a little bit above average not a leader but you know i would have to you know really go out there and look for some sort of a leader within this industry it doesn't just kind of give me any of that information there and let's go on to the next steps and that is basically it so we'll go ahead and do a comparison really quickly medical properties trust this looks very sloppy let's go ahead and drop a few of these out in the meantime so all we're going to be focusing on here is their ebitda so ebitda here is growing up or up at 1 billion so positive ebitda is pretty good over the past three years we have their funds from operation so funds from operation pretty good to see in a real estate investment trust instead of using their earnings per share or you know ratios such as that looking at their funds from operation making sure that it's moving positive is always good here yeah they probably did something kind of monkey there and that's completely normal here their debt to capital at 54.74 so that's not too bad at all you know generally for a real estate investment trust i like to see that debt to in, uh, debt to capital below 50 percent. this one's right at 54.71 so here bc properties again over the past 10 years growing EBITDA up at 1.2 billion their debt to capital is at 41 percent so that's below that 50 percent margin there their funds from operation has been steadily grown up at 900 million dollars and when we compare that to realty income here realty income is at 1.3 billion dollars for their EBITDA their funds from operation is at 1.08 so nice steadily growing and their debt to capital has been steadily decreasing so they've been having less debt to their overall capital, which has driven that uh, ratio down to 44% there. So doing a quick comparison between these, you can quickly see that realty income has below that 50% debt to capital. It also has really nice growing EBITDA, growing funds from operation, WP carry. Again, below that 50% ratio. Now we haven't looked at WP carry here, but just quickly threw it in there as well. Growing EBITDA, growing funds from operation, decreasing debt to capital. BC properties, all looking very positive there. Very nice debt to capital ratio there. And medical properties there. So they have slightly more debt over, you know, debt to capital. That's that's still fine though. I'm definitely interested in ticket symbol VICI. Thought that was kind of interesting. It's always nice to see others provide some sort of feedback or, you know, what they're currently looking at. Cause then, you know, you're not always looking you know 365 degrees at all hundreds and thousands of stocks out there so it's kind of nice to do these sort of deep dives into companies where you might find some sort of a gem out there but that is basically it for this video let me know down in the comment section below if you enjoyed the video if you are brand new to the channel have not yet subscribed go down below hit the red button to subscribe make it great hit the bell to be notified every time I release a brand new video and of course give this video a thumbs up make it blue and i will see you guys in the next video Bye bye